Hello and welcome to another video tutorial from Blender HD. My name is Jonathan Lampell and in this quick uh, tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to um, do some ground breaks and kind of earthquakes in a technique that I um, just figured out. So um, instead of going through and creating a scene, uh, we've already done plenty of constraints and um, fracturing, so I'm just going to show you what I did and how I set it up. and um, if you have any trouble with the fracturing or the constraints, go back and watch some of my earlier videos, and that way we just don't end up wasting time with things that you already know. So what I've done for this scene, um, this is just a quick example. Oh, what happened there? That was weird. Um, this is just a quick example of a ball just kind of smashing into a, a street or something. And what I have is I have, I mean obviously I have the ball, that's just for something to collide with. Um, but I also have two layers of ground. I have a crust and like a sort of you know top layer of concrete, and I also have the ground underneath. And I also have some constraints that are holding the crust together, and I don't have any on the bottom. But the most important part is I have this box surrounding it. And this is really, really important, and it took me quite a while to figure out how to make this type of effect. Um, until I realized that I needed to have that box because what it's doing is as the ball is hitting the ground instead of kind of spilling out to the to the ground or whatever uh, with with no need for constraints on the bottom at all is it's pushing these um, these bottom um, ground blocks that are a little bit bigger and it's pushing them but the, there's nowhere for them to go, so it's forcing them upwards around the point of impact, giving us this nice kind of collision shape. Like, say, if you uh, watch like Transformers or something, and they're kind of running, and they stomp on the ground and make this, make this kind of little indent crater, um, then, you know, this is kind of the same idea. And so, basically, the, the big thing here is this box is containing the containing the fractures and instead of pushing them outwards it's pushing them up in the correct places to make a nice realistic impact but going even farther than that uh, this can have a another um, this has more uses than just you know a straight impact perhaps you want to have the ball come up through the ground the opposite direction it also works just as well if I change that to animated make a location keyframe there and on frame 50, say I want to make a location keyframe there. Then as I play this back, it's going to come through the ground, but instead of kind of spilling out um, around the edges, it's just going to pop up through the middle and make a nice fracture. And maybe that's not completely realistic because it looks like it's kind of tearing, but I mean we could, we could edit the constraints to make it um, more realistic, so say I grab the rigid body constraints and change the break threshold to 10 update them slightly better but I mean we could tweak all day but I'll just go ahead and finish showing you um, but as you can see it's containing the containing the area of the explosion which is really really handy and it's giving us a nice natural kind of effect. Uh, one last thing I'll just turn that off and uh, you might want to make a kind of like a sinkhole or something where say this ball might want to crash and instead of just hitting the hitting the street or whatever this is and kind of resting there maybe it goes all the way through and I'm going to delete these keyframes real quick. So a really easy way to do that, to make the little sinkhole effect, is you can grab this container, go into edit mode, and uh, take this face, press I to inset it, select that face there, W, and subdivide. I'll subdivide it a couple times, then I will take this face, delete those vertices, so we just have this rim with a bunch of vertices around it. Select all those. Okay, and then I can hit W, loop tools, and circle. 
So pretty much you can make whatever kind of shape you want. You can make it a square, you can make it pretty much anything, but I'm just going to make it a circle right underneath where the ball is going to hit. And since this is this box is using mesh, uh, you have to you have to make sure it's set to mesh. Otherwise, if you set it to convex hole, it's going to use the volume, and as soon as you start, it's just going to explode. But since I'm using mesh, then it's going to work well and calculate those holes inside of it. And also, since these um, kind of pieces of rubble are set to start deactivated, it's not going to fall through the hole until the ball hits it. So that's really, really important down there. So now if I play this back, you can see that it oh, looks like it started falling through a little bit early. Uh, I think I need to make the hole a little bit, a little bit bigger so that there is room for all of it to fall through. So I think like that will be good. Yeah, that's all start deactivated, so it should not fall through immediately. But it looks like it is. Oops, maybe because this is too close. Hmm, yeah, I'm not quite sure because, I mean, if you say, if you tell it to start deactivated, oh, it's because this uh, this top layer here is not set to that, and it's activating the bottom ones. There we go. Uh, and then copy from active. So you can see that I've set these to different layers. Um, it's kind of like a little side tangent. I have a layer for just the box itself, a layer for the um, underneath ground and a layer for the top ground and I also have them set to groups so even if I have them all together I can easily select say all of the crust and, or all of the bottom without having to go through and manually pick them all which would be a huge pain so um, that's something to keep in mind because it's really really handy okay now as we play this back There we go. And this is really cool because not only did it contain the explosion, it's also, you know, once you create the sinkhole, all of the pieces are kind of falling into it uh, like would actually happen, um, but in such a way that it, it keeps the outside of the street um, or the outside box of this fairly, fairly the same. And just it just works very well. Uh, this would be impossible to do with just constraints because all of these pieces would be sticking together. But now that they are all loose, then they can just fall right through, and it works great. Uh, lastly, somebody asked me um, if I could make a earthquake like in the movie 2012, and that's kind of a kind of a big deal. That's kind of one of the best VFX shots ever. Um, so, I don't know, I've been playing around with it and I haven't quite gotten it down, but uh, one thing I can show you a couple ways of faking an earthquake. And uh, if you know your science, then you know that earthquakes are pretty much just the plate tectonics underneath the earth moving around and shifting, which is causing the earth to kind of collide with itself. So, you can see that if I just move this box around then that's eh, an okay earthquake I mean it works you can get that kind of um, motion uh, the kind of swaying motion I'm gonna set this up a little bit because it was intersecting okay so that's one way to do it uh, another way or, or another thing you could do is you could also scale it down kind of compressing it maybe even along like one axis or something and then it'll kind of rip in the middle so that's one thing you can do and uh, there was let's see there was another way um, I had an object underneath let's see I think it was a like a sphere or something
I'm going to set that to a passive rigid body animated. It's our keyframe there. Oh, not that one. So this is another way to kind of make that uh, rift is by moving an object kind of through it, and it gives you, you know, an interesting wave motion, but it also breaks up the earth so that right in the middle there you have that kind of fault line like that. So that works pretty well. Um, you can definitely test test uh, maybe you want to work with some force fields or something but I am definitely convinced that the secret to you know working with the ground is all about this little container and with that then you'll be able to get a lot more realistic effects because um, it just kinda simulates the earth a little bit better in a enclosed area so that was pretty much it for this tutorial um, I hope you learned something and enjoyed it so uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.